Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here. Couldn't wait to do this update. The snow is underway and here it is. This is Aspen Mountain and it's snowing in earnest, already working on six inches. We've got well over a foot yet to go over the next two and a half days. It's snowing in the Wasatch, snowing up in the Tetons, snowing beyond. So that flow is starting to establish itself. Let me take you into my bullet points here. Snow underway, the golden combo, is uh, it is setting up as we speak. This moderate to strong intensity atmospheric river, which will have benefits through the interior. Um, we're also looking at a stacked west-northwest flow from jet stream level all the way down to ridge top level. And then we're looking at a really nice temperature column with um, some pretty high ratios, 15 to 20 to 1 potentially for some ski areas for a short amount of time, which will help to really crank out the totals. You can see the timeline. We're in it now, 12-1 through about 12-3 through Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado. It probably lingers into early 12-4 for Wyoming. And then there's another shot of snow that should read 12-7 to 12-8 for Wyoming. That, that second storm system is a little more in question today, and I'll show you what I'm talking about um, here in just a second. But let me take you back. And I want to show you what this looks like on water vapor satellite imagery. So big area of low pressure riding this powerful northern branch, another one behind it, uh, disturbance over Hawaii. So we've got a couple of jet streams that are loading up here. The southern branch is active, but uh, more importantly, and we'll mark it in green, is this northern branch with both of those areas of low pressure. That is now hitting the Pacific Northwest. And we're starting to see that west-northwest flow turn and start to set up. And that's what's cranking out the snow already through the interior. So a lot going on. Both of these lows will contribute. Both of them will push in and help to escort in that atmospheric river, this deep connection back to the western uh, Pacific, reaching way back in just like a conveyor belt of moisture. Here's how this looks on the forecast radar and satellite. So by this afternoon, you've got snow in the Pacific Northwest, rain at lower elevations out there. You've got snow in Idaho, snow in the Tetons, snow in the Wasatch, snow in Colorado. And that focus in Colorado is mainly the central and northern mountains. That's where the biggest totals are going to be. So by Saturday morning, same thing. We're really getting nailed with that west-northwest flow, um, with that perfect orientation against the, uh, the way those mountain ranges are oriented, like in the Tetons. Um, in, in the Wasatch, in the central and northern mountains of Colorado, will maximize snowfall that way. There's Saturday at 4 p.m. Next batch comes in. Look at that. Nails all the same zones. That's Sunday morning at 6. By Sunday afternoon, still seeing that flow. Um, and then by the time we get into Monday morning, it starts to dry up. The leftovers are there through the central and northern mountains of Colorado, parts of the Tetons, and very light leftover snow in the Wasatch and beyond. But then there's one more storm system. And here it comes into the Pacific Northwest and BC. That's the one that's going to start to dive down to the south. And wait till I show you the jet stream um, as to what's going to happen with this. There's 12.6. So again, the emphasis, the impact from that would be 12, 7, 8, 9, and 10 in the interior, but it's not quite the same as what it was looking like yesterday. Let me take you into the jet stream forecast. First of all, I want to show you integrated vapor transport. So the atmospheric river component of this, um, the forecast up there around the Washington, Oregon coastline, you can see the surges as they come in and they keep getting bigger, um, moderate to strong in intensity. So there's a lot of juice with this setup. There's a lot of juice that will get carried in and benefit the Intermountain West through the, throughout the period. Here's the first uh, jet stream. This is 12-2 valid. You can see the west-northwest orientation again, all the way through the down through the atmosphere. We know that's going to take place. Here's the 12-9. Um, the so this is 12-9, and you can see the deep trough. This area of low pressure over the last two or three days has continued to trend further and further to the south, and it's so far south at this point on 12-9, it might cut itself off. If that does, it could go down and around Utah and miss it. Don't know yet, um, so the impact would be less. We'll have to wait and see how this pattern shakes out, but because that's really an amplified pattern. If it cuts off, that's not going to be necessarily good. Okay, so as far as totals, and I really look at this map today through the 4th as a grand total map. You know, what, what will we see as far as grand totals? Um, so right at 3 feet for Alton Snowbird, probably 2 feet for Big Cottonwood uh, Canyon, Brighton Solitude, maybe 20, 24 to 28 inches, um, probably 17, 18, 19, 20 inches Park City, Deer Valley. I haven't really changed anything with the Tetons. I think it's still looking big probably 26 to 30 inches up there. 
Um, in Colorado, the central and northern mountains really get the best flow, receive the best moisture, and we're a graphics out of this. So probably 15 to 20 inches through Aspen snow mass. Crested Butte, my, my, my confidence is a little bit lower. Um, I think the totals may be a little bit lower than what I'm showing there, but still you get the idea, double digits. Steamboat, Buff Pass, Vail, all again looking at probably 15 to 20 inches. Some of that will spill over into Summit County, but not quite as much. Uh, I would say up around um, Cameron Pass, probably 15 to 18 inches. That'll do it. Loveland, um, all those spots, Loveland, Keystone, A Basin, probably about a foot up there and big totals for the Pacific Northwest, Baker, Rainier, you know, we're all in that two to three foot range. Some good snow through the interior parts of BC and right through central Idaho. You can see the magenta colors well over a foot for a lot of those higher terrain areas uh, north of Sun Valley. All right, so a couple of specialty maps here. The first one is this. My forecast snow plume for Jackson Hole, I updated that the this morning really hasn't changed much. Think in 27, 28, 29, 30 inches or so. So we're already accumulating snow up there. The temperatures are cold, so we're snowing all the way down to the valley, the valley floors. And you can see how the numbers accumulate over time and then potentially some additional snowfall accumulation, 12, 7, 8, and 9. Um, let's go into the second period here, 12, 5 through 12, 10. Again, it really depends on how far south that load digs. It could, it could just scoot around the Wasatch. Don't know yet, but it does look like it's going to drop some snow in the Tetons, maybe in California and potentially in Colorado, very late in the period. All right, one final stop up in the northeast, still looking at some very good snow potential here, 12-1 through 12-10. Um, the best shot of snow, the moderate to heavy accumulation here occurs 12-3 into 12-4 with an area of low pressure that comes across and has a nice swath of um, available moisture with this. So Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine obviously get the most out of this. All right, guys, this is a, this is a great setup for the West. Um, we'll end on the grand totals map right here. I'll keep watching this today to see how this plays out. And if I need to do another update later, I probably will anyway, just to see how things are going. But always appreciate you tuning in here and take care.